Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we'll automate our Python ETL pipeline. We developed an ETL pipeline in the previous session. We will build on it today to give you a complete overview of extract, transform, and load. Link to the previous video is in the description below. We will use Apache Airflow to automate our ETL pipeline. Apache Airflow is a widely used open source workflow management system. It provides data engineer with an intuitive platform to create, schedule, monitor, and maintain their complex data pipelines. Airflow enables you to manage your data pipelines by altering workflow as directed acyclic graphs, also known as DAGs of tasks. You manage task schedule as code, and you can visualize your data pipelines dependency, progress, logs, code, and status via the user interface. Airflow enables you to set up data pipelines over data stores and data warehouses, run workflows at a schedule, create and manage script data pipelines as Python code. In this session, we will use the Taskflow API introduced in Airflow 2.0. Taskflow API feature allows data sharing functionality between tasks, However, the data exchange is limited only to small JSON serializable objects, such as dictionaries. We can't share large data frames from one task to another without serializing it first. Taskflow API makes it easier to author clean DAGs without extra boilerplates by using the task decorator. Airflow organizes your workflow in DAGs composed of tasks. So what is DAG? A DAG, directed acyclic graph, is the core concept of Airflow. It represents a group of tasks. It is organized with dependencies and relationship to say how they should run. DAG is defined as Python script that represents the DAG structure, task, and their dependencies as code. To run a DAG with any service, we can use Airflow's UI to set up connections, such as configuring our database credentials, so we can connect to SQL Server and Postgres. Airflow's UI enables you to observe the pipeline running in your environment, monitor the progress, and troubleshoot issues when needed. Airflow's visual DAGs also provide data lineage, which facilitates debugging of data flows and aids in auditing and data governance. Let's open PyCharm and start with our first DAG. I will refactor our Python ETL script to make it compatible with Airflow. As usual, we will import the required libraries at the top. Along with usual libraries, we will import few Airflow libraries, especially DAG, Task, and Task Group. Then we import few hooks. These will help us establish connection to our databases. We define the connection in the Airflow UI. I have two connections defined here to our source and destination databases under Admin Console. We can add a new connection by clicking the plus icon. Here we can select a database and define connection details. We reference the connection in our code by the connection ID. Okay, I'll move back to the code. And finally, we import pandas and SQL alchemy. We can use the task decorator to define our task. First, we define a function to get table names from SQL Server, just like the previous session. Since our connection is defined in Airflow, we can get a hold of it with connection ID and with the help of MS SQL hook. Then we supplied a SQL script that gets the table name from the system schema in SQL Server. The SQL hook has a built-in function to get pandas data frame. It takes SQL query as an argument. We save the data frame in a DF variable and print it. Since we only can share serializable data between tasks, I'll convert it to a dictionary and this function will return a dictionary with table names. We will define our second task with a function called load SRC data. This function takes a dictionary as an argument, which is returned from the previous function. We get the connection detail for Postgres with base hook. Remember, connection details are saved in the admin panel, and we save it in a con variable. With the help of SQL Alchemy, we create a connection and provide the connection details via con variable. Let's define an empty array. I'll call it all TBL name to store the table names. And we will return this at the end of this function. We iterate over the dictionary items to get the table names. Let's append the table names to our all TBL name array. 
to display the number of rows we are importing, I'll declare a variable and we will set it to the length of the data frame. We create a dynamic SQL query here with a table name coming from the dictionary value and with the help of f string. And once again, we will make use of SQL hook to query SQL Server with our dynamic SQL query. And we will save the output to a data frame. We print a message how many rows we are importing and from which table. Now it's time to persist this data in Postgres. We will call the toSQL function and prefix the table name with src to indicate that this is a source table. We print a success message and return the table names array at the end. We are done with data extract. It's time to transform this data and once we are done with the transformation, we will persist the data in staging tables. In the first task, we will transform dim product table. Let's query the source table to preview the data. This will give us an idea where to apply transformation. We see that there are columns in French and Spanish that we can get rid of. There are a lot of columns with nulls or missing values. We can set defaults for these. Also, there's a large photo column that we don't need for analysis, so we can delete this as well. Last, we'll rename few columns where the name contains English. For example, the description column is English description, so we can drop English since we drop other language columns. Let's see how we carry out these transformations with pandas. We will name this task transform dim product. Let's query the source table from Postgres into a data frame. We will use pandas to implement transformation. If you need a refresher on pandas, I have covered this in this video. Feel free to check it out. First, let's drop the unwanted column. We will provide the list of columns we want to keep from the data frame. Let's save it into a new data frame called revised. Then we replace nulls with zeros for numeric columns and NA for string columns. Let's go ahead and rename columns where name contains English since all of our columns are in English now. We are done with transformations and let's save this into a staging table with two SQL function. We perform similar operations in product subcategory and product category. Drop the unwanted column and rename few columns and save the updated data to tables with STG prefix. To build the final product model, we will query all three tables. There is a data type mismatch here, so we'll convert the column to integer to match the data type and join or merge the three tables into a single data frame then we save this data frame into a table with PRD prefix. So this will be the final presentation table. Let's declare a DAG and define some properties. First, it is the schedule interval. You will set this to 9 a.m. with a cron expression. If you need more details on cron, then I'll leave a link in the description below. Then we define a start date when this schedule should start. And we will set the catch up to false. If you set a start date in the past, and catch up to true, then the schedule will run n numbers of time for each day it missed till the current date. It is designed to backfill the job. Last, we will set a tag for this DAG. Tags help us group together multiple DAGs, and you can use tags to filter DAGs from the UI. Under DAG, we define task group to call our tasks. We group the extract and load task under one group. We call the first task and save its return value in a variable. Then follows the next task and supply it the return value from the first task. We set the dependency between them and define the order in which they should run. We will see the visual representation of this in the UI. We group the transformation tasks together. Let's call this group transform product. We will call the three tasks here. We group the task as a list and these can run in parallel. In the last group, we call the product model task, and this will execute once transformation tasks are complete. We define the order of the task group, and the Airflow will execute these groups in this order. Let's go ahead and save our work. Just an FYI, once you save a new DAG, it takes a while for Airflow to pick it up, so it may not show up in the UI right away. I will open the UI. Our DAG is disabled by default. I'll locate it and enable it with the slider. We see the dependencies between our tasks. We can get a better picture under the graph UI. This is the directed acyclic graph. This gives us the visual representation of the order in which our task will execute. 
these are the overarching groups of tasks. We can click on them to see the underlying task. And we see the dependencies with the arrows. On the top right, we have the schedule information for this tag. We can wait for it to run on schedule or we can manually trigger it with run button. We can see it in action under the tree tab. So we'll head there and see it execute. There are different statuses here and they are color coded. We click on individual task and see the logs for it. The logs provide us with all the details and they also log errors if there are any. I'll let this tag complete. Okay, our ETL load is complete. I will refresh our schema in Postgres to see our source staging and final model is persisted. I'll query the final PRD product table to see the transformation. We don't see any nulls, which is good, and the column names are updated. At the end, we see category and subcategory columns. So we have denormalized the product dimension. Our transformations are successfully executed and persisted in the final product model. This is how we automate our ETL pipeline with Airflow. I hope you enjoyed this session. This is all for now. Share, like, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.